Hey guys, this is Matt with Technoax Royalty Free Music. A couple days ago on my community tab, I asked you guys to ask me some questions for a 2019 end of year Q&A video. And this is that video right here. I'm going to be answering the few questions that you guys gave me. And also, to keep things visually interesting, I'm going to put some Minecraft footage up on the screen for you guys to look at while I'm answering your questions. Thank you guys so much for your support over the years. 2019 was a pretty good year for me, and I hope it was for you. And I hope you guys have an excellent 2020 in the future. Positively Unbelievable 4. My question is simple, really. Like, how was your 2019? Was it good or was it bad? I would say that my 2019 was actually really good. Uh, for those of you who haven't been following me past a couple years, in January or February of 2018, I landed a contract electrical engineering position with Microsoft. And the way contracts works there is that you're only allowed to work for Microsoft 18 months at a time. And then at the end of that 18 months, you're kind of forced not to work for Microsoft for another six months before you can go back. And in midway this year, I was coming up on the end of that contract. And so I started applying for new jobs and I landed one really quickly. It was really surprising and good news. And that job has gone really well. So well, in fact, that the guys liked me so much that they brought me on full time. So as of yesterday, I am working for my new company full time. And that's really good. It's a really different thing because I'm used to doing contract work, but it's also nice because it's nice to know that I'll have a little bit of stability now in my work life. As far as music goes, uh, as you guys can tell, I've kind of slowed down a little bit on my music production. There's a few things going on. One is that I've been kind of self-conscious about the quality of my music lately, and so I've been kind of holding back a little bit and trying to take my time. Uh, there's also the aspect of maintaining a little bit of balance in my personal life with my music. And also, as you can see in the screen in front of you, I've kind of nerded out on Minecraft for a little bit. I don't know what happened. I went on a huge tangent and I made this ridiculous looking city. So I decided to show it off before I close it out because in 2020, I'm not going to be doing this Minecraft map anymore. I want to focus on the music and bring more variety like I used to to the channel and make music for you guys as long as as long as Google will let me. So hopefully you guys will understand. I'm, I'm sorry about the slowdown in, in the process, but it will pick back up again next year. Lift Pizza. Do you play any instruments? Number one, in any capacity, and number two, in your music published. Well, uh, as a kid, I played trombone from grade school to high school, and that was pretty fun. I tried to play beyond that, but I joined the military, and the first time I tried to play trombone in the military barracks, I got shaving cream stomped underneath the door and all over my floors, and that was the mess, and that was the end of my trombone career. And so later on, I picked up the guitar, and I did play a little bit of guitar in my rock music earlier on. Uh, one of the problems with being fairly not rich and uh, trying to play guitar through an input peripheral is that you get a lot of background noise and it doesn't sound as good as some of the uh, sampled instruments that I have now. So um, I'm going to pick up my guitar again but uh, I, I need to basically upgrade my input peripheral devices before I actually put them on my music again because I like to have the quality into my music and that background noise of like what I have right now is not working. So I will keep you guys posted on that. I actually need to practice up on my guitar as well because uh, with the spread of genres that I'm posting, not everything is a rock track and so I don't necessarily have the time to practice. And uh, I do have the, the goal of trying to still balance my music with my regular life. So 
that that's the answer for that i do have a seven spring guitar and i maybe have a plan to buy another one which is a six string guitar instead of a seven string guitar uh, but those are kind of like nebulous goals that are may or may not be priority of 2020 choco boy your programs in 2020 uh, for the most part my main digital audio workstations are the same as they were in 2016 back then I stopped using cakewalk sonar and I started using Reaper and it's a really good program and I haven't moved from that since I've I've learned how to use this program it's a bit of a change from the last program but I'm used to it now and I have no complaints with how it operates so and also I do use uh, reason as well propeller had reason uh, I still know how to use that program it depends on what I want to do and how I want to tackle maybe a bit of music I feel like um, the interoper uh, interoperability between the two programs has kind of gone backwards in, in the last year, but hopefully uh, Propeller Head Reason will be a little bit more compatible with Reaper uh, moving forward because I like using those two programs in conjunction with each other. Um, as far as like, um, as far as instruments go, I like Battery 4 as a drum unit. It's basically a staple of my electronic uh, dance music right now because it has so many patches and it is so versatile in what you can do with those uh, with those patches. Like you can take individual samples of kicks and you can shorten it, shorten it down. You can apply filters to it and you can output it to separate channels so you can apply effects to it. So Battery 4 from Native Instruments is something I really recommend if you want to get into music production. Also Serum is a synthesizer that I've been heavily into for a couple of years now and I recommend that wholly. Right now I'm trying to learn how to use the Vocaloid software so I can have more lyrics into my music. Um, I do like collaboration but the nature of my channel uh, I can understand why you know singers don't really want to collaborate because the amount of music that I produce and the way it is used kind of overshadows the efforts of a singer. So I totally understand why singers don't want to collaborate to collaborate with me on music tracks nowadays because I'm kind of a different beast uh, in terms of music as opposed to other channels out there. Um, so, uh, you know, it's not something that I'm mad about. It's just something I've come to understand the, the nature of my channel and stuff like that. So Vocaloids are an excellent way to add uh, vocals to my music. And also, um, I do plan on trying to do more samples. Maybe I'll go back onto the acapella sites and uh, get uh, some samples there. But a lot of times there, the acapella... It's very depressing. People sing about depressing things on that site, and I like to go for like the happier side of things. Uh, one thing I need to try out, maybe, is a suggestion from Pro Propellerhead. There's a site out there where I think you can actually collaborate specifically with singers, and it's not YouTube, but it's a specific site, and I gotta see if it's actually still out there. So maybe I will utilize that to bring some more lyrics into the mix. Um, in other words, um, uh, my, my orchestra is a mix between East West and, uh, native instruments. I did purchase, uh, a native instruments pack complete a couple years ago. It's not the latest, but it still has orchestra in there. But for the most part, most of my orchestra stuff is handled by quantum leap East West instruments. Um, what else? Uh, Quantum Leap East West for my guitars and my rock stuff and um, some contact drums from complete for my rock stuff I feel like that sounds like the most uh, natural drums that you could ask for um, there's there's other things too I could go on and on and on about the musical patches that I have but that would take about an hour in and of itself 
and then you would really get into depths I could probably talk for days about how to operate each and every one of these instruments so but I like to I like to keep um, all these instruments around and buy new instruments so I can have a fresh take on like patches and stuff like that you know I always like to keep my inst my music fresh and new and come up with different angles to go for so I hope you guys have enjoyed the music so far I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going Arun 4, do you make a living of the music? What is your background? What is your plans for the future? I uh, make a little bit of money on my music. Not much, but a little bit. Mostly through Spotify, because a lot of you guys listen to me on Spotify. And quite frankly, that's where most of the money that I make off of my music comes from. Obviously, with my website, you guys are able to download my music for free. Um, I understand that a lot of people don't want to download music onto their phones because their storage limit is limited. And so I have put my music on other sources like Spotify, Deezer, um, KKBox, and a bunch of other different services. And I like it when you guys listen to, that, uh, to it on that because I feel like those services are a little bit more conducive to listening to music. Uh, like, I understand why my watch time, my average watch time for videos is actually fairly horrible because you guys are basically browsing my videos for music that you want for your videos. And so I would say, say that my YouTube channel is not really um, the same as other people's YouTube channel. It's not really an entertainment place. It's more like a source, a resource for you guys. So it's handled differently. So when people want to listen to my music exclusively and not worry about having to do something with their own videos, uh, I understand that Spotify is the better source to do that with. Now, there are people that actually listen to music on YouTube, but I wouldn't say that youtube is a very good place for music right now quite honestly but in any case um my background is actually in engineering i am electrical engineering in real life and uh i like doing that job but i also do this as kind of a secondary job and a hobby for the future i plan on continuing to work as an electrical engineering uh, but also continuing my side job as a royalty free music producer for you guys and hopefully i can keep up the ideas and the variety and the interest in the music to make music in the long run and maybe one of these days when i get old and very very haggard i can I, I can continue making music when I retire and that'll be my job when I retire and I'll have like thousands of tracks down by the time I die. That's the plan. I don't know if it's going to work, but that's the plan as of right now. Peter Slack. How do you hope to grow your channel with the copyright shenanigans, which are hitting so many channels? Honestly, actually, that is one of the driving forces for my channel is the copyright uh, sh shenanigans and it's sad to say but like it, my channel wouldn't be as successful today um, if it weren't for corporate greed basically wanting to control every aspect of their music. Um, the copyright shenanigans doesn't really affect my channel as much as other people mainly because I know how to deal with the content ID companies. I'm in a unique position in that because I make my own music, I can actually prove that I produce my own music. And that's because I also posted on YouTube and I have a timestamp proving that I'm the original source for all of this. So when somebody comes up to me with like uh, random claims that are erroneous against their channel because of my music, I'm able to quickly find out the offending source, go to the company that is hosting the offending source, and then file takedown notices. So the uh, content ID claims that are erroneous affect channels as little as possible and that's not just my channel it's your channels too because whenever i get hit with erroneous content id matches i know you guys are too and so it's my 
it's my priority to get those taken care of, not just on a YouTube level, but go to the actual source of content ID companies like TuneCore and CD Baby and all that to get it so you don't actually get content ID matched at all. And this is not what I originally expected when I started this sort of YouTube channel, but it's been a fairly reoccurring uh, thing where somebody will basically upload my music onto a site like CD Baby with basically my music and maybe some vocals strapped to the top of it and put it in the content ID system. So it's, it's something that I know how to fight, I guess you could say. And uh, I know how to fight it because it's been something that I've had to deal with over the years at a fairly regular pace. Cray Cray Wolf, how do you make such awesome music? Uh, I'm glad you think the music is awesome. And uh, I can tell you that I've been making music for almost two decades now. So hopefully I've gotten a little better at that. I will say one of the things that I used to say that the variety of music that I produce helps to keep things fresh and I do believe that still to this day and that's why in 2020 I promised to make more variety of music. Uh, there's some music of uh, genres that I've been kind of discouraged against because they don't really get the traffic that other genres do. And those genres are basically the orchestra. They fall along the lines of orchestra and soundtrack uh, 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 music. And while I like that kind of stuff, uh, it doesn't necessarily attract the audience that other genres do. But I feel like the including that stuff back into my channel is necessary to keep the variety. So I'm going to be doing more of that in the future. FTMN Auxiliary. Simple question. What are the lyrics in your song, I Am a Monster? Oh, that is that is actually pretty tough. Uh, so back in the day, I used to go to acapella set, sites to uh, basically use some acapella tracks in much the same way that I uh, let you guys use royalty-free tracks. I used to download royalty-free acapella tracks to try to bring some life into my tracks to do uh, to to basically bring lyrics into some of the instrumentals that I use uh, I I have a different approach now I haven't used that site in a while but I can get you the lyrics to that uh, as soon as I figure that out um, there is a singing part I remember that is fairly easy to get the lyrics to but then the guy that I use for the rapping he does it so quick that I'll have to spend a bit of time to translate that one again. It's been a while too. That is that is a six year old song right there. Super Void Cinema. Which of your own compositions is your favorite? Now that is a tough one to answer because I like a lot of them. I don't specifically have a favorite at the moment, but I do have ones that really stood out this year as being really good. that I'm most proud of are the ones that I kind of happenstance by accident and they're not necessarily a specific genre that I'm going for they just end up happening and I end up just being lost in the creative process and what ends up happening is a better track for sure Kalasumi asks what made you want to start creating music for others to use for free uh, it was a little bit of an accident actually I started with this song right here and I just basically kept on going but 
To be honest, I was probably inspired a little bit by Kevin McLeod. Everybody knows who Kevin McLeod is. He is the original OG royalty-free music producer. And I figured that since I like to produce music a lot and I didn't really have necessarily have the time to manage a band of my own, that I could just create a lot of music and put it online and see what people thought about it. Uh, beforehand, I did create music and I put it on other sites like mp3.com and iuma back in the day when mp3 sites were all the rage. And so I, you could probably state that this is kind of an extension of what I was doing back then. An auto enthusiast's life. What is the weirdest video that your music has been used in? Uh, well... You're gay. America is in an information-based civil war. That's why now more than ever, we've got to hit the streets of America and let these globalist scum know we're not backing down from their bullying. We're only intensifying our operation. There are other things that my music has been used for that I can't really show on this channel, but uh, regardless, it shows you that my philosophy on this channel and the music that I've produced for you guys is that I'm a free speech absolutist. That is what I am, and that means that if you have opinions um, that I don't agree with, that's fine. If you have, like... Uh, weird uh, kind of creations that uh, you know may not be agreeable to everybody else I'm, I'm fine with you using my music for that uh, I am all for free speech and that goes with like the philosophy even though YouTube's philosophy has kind of changed from a free speech platform into something that's not really a free speech platform that's what I am I am definitely pro free speech Taznim Bari 23. Do you still make songs for YouTubers? I I do. And as a matter of fact, all of the music that I make is for you guys, almost specifically, because this is this is the platform that I most think about when I'm writing my music for you guys. Uh, I need to get back into the background series where I can make these simple tracks that you can overlay on your music tracks as as background music. But all in all, uh, I do actually make everything for you. Uh, now, do I make for specific YouTubers? I don't really, um, unless they commission me for like maybe a small fee. And, and the reason is that I, I don't want to favor any sort of YouTuber or anybody in the community. Even Jack Septicai, who has been using the same song for about six years ago, uh, and you know, I appreciate him, but he. I didn't write that song for him specifically. He chose that song well after it was written, and he made that his outro for uh, for about six years now. Um, there are other people that I, I vastly appreciate them using my music and generate tr generating traffic f for my YouTube channel. But on the whole, I, I don't really, I maintain myself as a neutral player amongst all the communities. And that way it provides a platform where you guys can feel like you can freely express yourself with my music. And that maintains the purpose of my channel, really. I don't know if that made sense, but that's my answer. Viking of Lordaeron 3. My question is, how often indie devs ask for your music and your opinion on that? Well, like YouTubers, game devs often ask me permission to use my music for their video games. Not so much to write music specifically for them. Sometimes they do that uh, in that they commission me for that kind of work. But I often find myself with an email or two with game devs asking me to use a specific song uh, in, in exchange for some sort of credit being displayed on their game. And I'm completely fine with that. Uh, like, there is a community of Roblox guys that have developed 
basically a sub game on that platform called survive the disasters and a lot of people have come from that game to my the various uh, music tracks that they've used on that game and they state well i'm here from roblox survive the disasters and i'm 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 floored i am glad that you guys have been able to use my music in such a platform in fact, if you guys want to make more games like that, go right on ahead, and I'm I you've got my seal of approval there. Uh, as far as uh, commissions go, uh, I'm still open for that, but again, I'm trying to maintain a balance between my life and music. So, I I I gotta plan out exactly how I would that do that and maintain my YouTube channel at the same time. It's a bit of a challenge and a challenge that I'm willing to accept for 2020. I'm looking way into the future. Okay, everybody, thank you for viewing this Q&A video. I'll have plenty more music coming up in the year 2020. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.